A uh, really warm welcome to uh, everybody to Community Church CCE Sunday Gathering. Uh, welcome if you're here in the King's Hall, uh, and welcome if you're joining us on Zoom, Facebook, or YouTube. I think that tune is always going to remind us of 2020 and uh, the desire to move and have a bit of joy maybe in a difficult year. So, warm welcome to everybody. My name is Rupert. I'm one of the leaders uh, here in CCE, and I'm joined this morning by Kirsty, who's helping me host uh, this morning. How are you this morning, Kirsty? Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Aha, I'm on. Hi. It's nice to see everyone this morning. There's a few more people here today. It's great. Yeah. Good to see you all here. And I'm also joined by um, Bella, who's going to be speaking this morning. Bella, do you want to just tell us what you're um, just going to be sharing about a little bit later on? Yeah, we'll be thinking um, about Paul and thankfulness, which is quite timely because it's Thanksgiving in the States next, uh, yeah. next week. So thankfulness and how we can practice this is going to be our topic today. Very much looking forward to that. Um, so, Kirsty, do you do do you do Thanksgiving down in Australia at all, or is that Not really? No. no. Sort of the American <laughs> culture is kind of coming we, over we a take, lot, isn't it? But we take bits and pieces, a bit from the UK, a bit from the America. Yeah, yeah, that's the best way of doing things, I yeah. think. So, good to have you all here um, contributing and leading. And we've also got Toby, who's going to lead us uh, in worship just in a minute. Um, so, just before we go to uh, some worship, which uh, Kirsty's just going to introduce in a sec, there's an image um, that I'd like to just ask the tech team to put up uh, of just uh, Jesus and an invitation to come. And uh, this is an image that Andrew Hooks put together for us, along with some other images of Jesus. And I'd like to just invite us for just a few seconds just to reflect on that image and that invitation to come to Jesus this morning. So the scripture does say, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So as we enter into this time together, we're, we're praying for rest, Lord Jesus. As we call all your saints together. Because worship is the strategy by which we interrupt our preoccupation with ourselves and attend to the presence of God. So let's forget about our weeks or lift up those things to you, Lord Jesus, today as we praise you with thanksgiving. And I'm just going to read the psalm. Yeah, actually, I think that's for us to read together, Lord. So I just uh, thank you for our musicians today, Lord Jesus, um, as we praise you and uh, Feel free to shout at home because you can do that and feel free to clap and dance if you are here today with us. Thank you, Lord. So over to you, Toby. Has 
thou not seen? Oh, how thy days as it have been. Pray him what he ordered. Oh, praise to the Lord who doth prosper thy work and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy
risen sun my beauty can dispose of snow. That was, uh, thank you, Toby. That was really beautiful. Um, very struck by the line, boldly do we approach the throne. Um, we're going we're gonna to read the creed together now. And we do this because it's a way of affirming our faith and gathering around Jesus. Different people, different opinions different experiences and I, I see that when I look around here today and I know that that is representative of the people that are on Zoom today as well. We are curious about Jesus, we want to know him, we desire to know him and what's beautiful is that he desires to know us. So we're going to affirm our faith by reciting this creed together and we tell stories of Jesus as we gather. So let's say this together. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So having affirmed our faith, 
um, we are now uh, an opportunity to tell some stories about the difference that our faith makes in our lives, in our everyday lives. So just for a moment, we, the questions that we've been uh, thinking about the last few weeks, this is the last Sunday, is where will you be this time tomorrow and what will you be doing? And how can the CCE community pray for you? So just for a moment, I'd like us to imagine this time tomorrow. Where will you be? Just imagine yourself in that place. And then I'd like to, I'd like to invite you to imagine Jesus is there with you. Where is he? What's he doing? What's he looking at? Where's his focus? What's he maybe saying? Just being told I can't, can't be heard by somebody here, so I'll speak up a little bit more. So, it's an opportunity now just for us to um, share a few things uh, of uh, what you will be doing tomorrow. So, if you're here in the King's Hall, you can come up uh, to uh, that microphone just there. Uh, if you're on Zoom, we can also get you uh, to say something on Zoom this morning as well. So if you want to say something, please just uh, put something in chat uh, and uh, we can uh, get your uh, picture up and hear you uh, on Zoom. So this time tomorrow, where will you be and what will you be doing and how can we pray? You can, thank you, Lucy. That's brilliant. You can take your mask off when you speak. That's fine. I think, oh, okay. Yeah, no, it is. Um, was, oh, yeah. So this time tomorrow, I will be in New College. Um, I'll be watching a lecture about the prophet Daniel, um, which I'm quite excited about. Um, and I think. I would just really love prayer for, um, I think, I guess, my faith while studying theology, because I do love it, but um, especially when we do biblical studies and we've been looking at the prophets this term, um, there have been lots of things that have been really challenging. Like the prophets are not lightweight. There's a lot of really tough stuff in there. And when we speak about it, um, I like to think that there's always some kind of interpretation that makes it more comfortable and it's that's not always the case, and I have really found that quite difficult. So, yeah, I just, I'd love prayer that um, the difficulties that I find while I study don't get in the way of the God that I know and love. Brilliant. Thank you, Lucy. <clears throat> we have something on uh, Zoom from Chris, who says, tomorrow uh, he will be sitting at his desk working from home, and he sees Jesus standing quietly a couple of steps back waiting that I might turn for a moment and acknowledge him. And the prayer is that, he, that uh, Chris might remember him uh, in the moment. Uh, tomorrow, this time tomorrow, I will be uh, at uh, a Christian outdoor um, center, and uh, there's a few people doing a discipleship year, and I'm doing some training uh, with them around uh, grace, identity, uh, and Jesus. So, you know, nice small subjects uh, there. So I would, uh, and as I was just reflecting, I was seeing Jesus um, not facing me, but facing all these uh, young people who'd rather be on the hills uh, or canoeing, but they're actually listening to me. But he just has a desire to just minister to them 
uh, and help them in his journey, uh, in their journey towards him. So I would appreciate uh, prayer tomorrow. Anyone else? It would be great to hear from you. We could, one or two other people. So anyone else that would like to share, if you're on Zoom or here. Roman, thank you. Um, tomorrow at that time, I will be uh, in our flat, um, small small room, and uh, learning for and writing essays. So um, um, there are two essays due on, well, three things on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I appreciate prayers, and I see I see Jesus um, uh, near me, very me close to me, and. Um, saying, oh, look at that part and that part. Why don't you combine this and that? It's very practical. Um, yeah, I appreciate prayer for that. Thank you. Brilliant, Roman. Thank you. Be good to pray for you this week. Sounds like a busy week. But love what you're seeing about Jesus there. Helping. Anyone else? Kathy. So nice to see you here. And it's nice to be here again, Kathy's saying. Second time in the last few months. Just making our way to the microphone. Don't touch it, Kathy. No, I won't. Can anyone hear me okay? Right, I have the most terrible problem that I've ever had in my life, is um, my spine has decided it doesn't want to work anymore. And so down from my spine down, it's actually at the base of, my, of around here is twisting the nerves. It's not the nerves aren't doing what they should do. So the twist of the nerves and the pain is, I can't even describe, describe the pain. I've had a lot of painkillers this morning, that's why I was able to come here. So, and this bones here are very, very tender as the day goes on, it gets worse. I really can't bear to wear even underwear, it's so tender and the bones hurt and the muscles and the joints are sort of twisted round. So the out, the outcome of that is um, if they can't do anything is that my body will start to turn this way. I have noticed a few months ago and um, wearing jeans or anything, I always felt like this leg was wrong and I thought maybe they'd made it wrong until I realized the hip round here isn't, my body isn't straight anymore. I can't stand up straight, it's, it's quite difficult. And I find this awful because I'm a very physical person and I have to dance and sing whenever I hear music, I'm just, I'm just gone. I don't really know where I am, I just, I just go and I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that again. So I, I, I pray a lot, but um, it's, very, it's very, very difficult in my body's, I don't know if anyone has noticed it, my body started doing this um, with the, ner the nerves jumping because I don't think the nerves know what to do anymore. So there's my breathing and my heart on, on, top of, on top of that. But Jesus is good and he is always here with us. And so I just, I just talk to him. I tell him how I feel about it. And you know, if there's anything he wants to do, then I'm very grateful that I have a lot of difficulty at home and my neighbor, who I never got on very well for with for a couple of years, and I, I got to the point now um, that there was no more shouting and swearing at me, so we just said hello. And last week she came down and she said to me, would you charge this vacuum cleaner for me? I've lost, I've lost the thing. So I did, and it charged up okay. When she came back, I said, the vacuum cleaner's charged. She said, really? It's charged up full? And I said, yes, I said, it's in the bedroom, just go and get it. Oh no, she says, it's yours. I said, it's not mine, I'm not taking it. It's an expensive one, it was a shark. And she says, look, she says, you can't use what you're using. My 
the vacuum cleaner lay on the floor for three weeks because I couldn't, I couldn't use it. So she gave me this and it's a shark and it's light as a baby. I don't even have to push it, it just, it just glides. So that is a real blessing. It is, but as time goes on, there's going to be other things, unless there, there, there is something they can do. But if not, I'm still here, and that's, that's what matters to me, whether I can come to church is the most important thing. So really, yes, prayers for me would be absolute, an absolute blessing. Yeah, I was supposed to meet Norman to go to the, 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 gift, the gift shop, and I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't even walk. I couldn't put my foot. Mornings are really bad. I can't, I thank you, can't get out of bed. But they've given me a reel so I can do that. Sorry. No, it's all good. But it would be lovely to pray for you, Kathy. Yeah. So let's, let's just pray. We, we can't lay hands on people just now. Um, but we can maybe reach out our hands and imagine the Holy Spirit just coming on people. It would be great just to pray for Kathy sounds excruciating pain. So maybe just imagine the Holy Spirit just coming and touching Kathy. But also we're thinking about Chris, Roman as he does his essays, Tom's taking his car to an MOT, I'm training this week. Let's just imagine the Holy Spirit coming and we're just reaching out our hands to these people. And we're praying for God's healing, for blessing, for presence, so, Father, we just lift all of this before you. And we pray especially for Kathy and the pain that she is in. I pray for just healing and strength and help for her. And for each of us this time tomorrow in our daily lives, maybe in our work, as a parent at home, in our retirement, whatever it is that we're doing, Jesus, we pray that you will be present amongst us and that we would turn and acknowledge and see your presence this time tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, uh, for that. Um, just one or two bits of uh, news and uh, information, which I think will come up uh, on the slides. If you're uh, joining us on Zoom or Facebook, YouTube, and you're new or interested in finding out a bit more about uh, the CCE community, uh, then we would love to stay in touch with you uh, and tell you some of the news and things that are going on and ways in which you can get involved. Um, there's uh, lots of information on our website uh, and you can also if you're interested in finding out a bit more uh, and getting involved if you send an email to office at cce.community uh, and we would love to uh, let you know how you can get involved in a small group or in other ways uh, in our church community we have an app called church suite which we can get you signed up for uh, which has a calendar and various other things of just staying in touch or you can follow us on facebook uh, or Instagram, there's lots of information that goes up there. Uh, so that's the first thing, if we could have the next slide, please. Um, so this year, uh, on our Christmas service, which is going to be the 20th of December uh, this year, um, we normally take up an offering, um, which we give away to some uh, project or organization uh, that is helping people that are more vulnerable in um, our society or overseas, depending on what is going on this year. Um, we want to do something in advance of the 20th, and that's partnering with the local Salvation Army that's just down the road here. Uh, and they are distributing presents that are referred to them by social work or other um, agencies where um, children may not get any presents on Christmas uh, Day. And so they're distributing, I think, to around 300 families in the south of Edinburgh uh, and there are three ways in which we can give or contribute to this uh, Christmas appeal uh, this year uh, instead of the offering at our Christmas service you can either um, 
there is a, a link uh, on our uh, website or in the newsletter last Friday to an Amazon wish list, and you just purchase uh, the present, and it gets delivered to the Salvation Army directly. So that's one way. Uh, if you don't wish to use Amazon and you'd like to use a more local retailer, um, um, big up for all the local uh, retailers, uh, then you can buy a present and you can drop it off at the King's Hall and we will arrange uh, to uh, make sure all the presents go uh, down to the Salvation Army uh, in time. So you could bring it next Sunday is the deadline for that. Um, so if you can bring it next Sunday uh, or during the week and just liaise with either Inca or Andrew if you want to drop it off to make sure somebody's here. Um, or the third way is you can give some money to CCE, which we will collate and gather, uh, and then again send on to uh, the Salvation Army. So the deadline for a physical present, it needs to be new and unwrapped, uh, is next Sunday, and the Amazon wish list uh, or money is uh, a week on Friday. That's the 4th of December. And it would be great. They're so excited, Salvation Army, that we're um, getting involved and helping them uh, with this appeal. I think they were a bit worried that they wouldn't get anything, um, but they've uh, 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 just excited that we're able to partner with them this year. Um, the next few Sundays you can book in. There's generally space if you want to uh, book up at the last minute. We're asking folks just to uh, sign up to one in advance. Uh, and then if there are spaces on the Friday in the newsletter, it comes out. Um, if there are spaces and you can uh, book in, please don't just turn up on the door. Uh, and that takes us up to the 13th of December and we'll let you know uh, what the plan is on the 20th. We're just uh, still trying to make some decisions uh, about how we do the Christmas service. Uh, and then just a quick uh, thing around Christmas trees. It was mentioned last week, you can purchase uh, their on uh, church suite uh, or the website or the newsletter. Justin's providing some Christmas trees. Uh, and Naomi is looking for some ideas for growth groups starting uh, in January. So if you're interested in running a short-term uh, small group with a particular focus or vision, uh, and there's been some excellent ones over the six to nine months, um, last six to nine months. Um, so we're looking for some other ones that will start kind of next term, as it were. Um, and uh, if you've got an idea, please speak to Naomi. Excellent. And the final thing, if you want to give, um, thank you so much for the faithful giving. Uh, there's a QR code you can scan on your phone, um, or you can just go to cce.community forward slash give, uh, and there are lots of ways in which you can give. If you're here in the King's Hall, there's a box at the back. Okay, I think it's now time for the children to go here. Kirsty's going to take you out, and uh, Bella's going to come and speak. Kirsty's going to come and pray for Bella in a sec. We're just going to get ourselves sorted out up here. This is um, Bella Tanza, and Roman has joined her on stage. She's going to read the scriptures just in a minute. Bella and Roman are our student workers, but their main focus is being mum and dad to two wonderful little children, uh, and also their uh, Bible college, final year of um, Bible college. Uh, and it's just great that Roman and Bella are getting involved in leading the student work, which is small, but some really good small beginnings with the student work. Very challenging in lockdown, so please do be praying for them. Uh, and uh, Bella shared once during the summer, and um, this is the second time just speaking in CC. Really excited about what you're going to be doing as part of our series uh, worshippers in the wilderness as we explore different ways to worship when we can't uh, sing together. So I think Kirsty's going to pray for Bella and then over to you, Bella. Great. Excited to hear you speak today, Bella. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for Bella. Her name means beautiful and how fortunate we are 
as a congregation to have this beautiful woman of God preaching your word. Thank you for the time that she has put into exploring your word, Lord Jesus. And thank you that we get to uh, get the fruits from that, Lord. So I pray that you'll just bless her today. Let her be receptive to your spirit uh, as it speaks in her in her soul, Lord Jesus. And as we, uh, as a congregation, benefit from that. So just, yeah, bless her, Lord, and um, make sure she has fun with preaching your word today, Lord Jesus. In your powerful name, amen. Can everybody hear me? Yes, the sound okay? Great. So as Rupert has already said, we're exploring ways of worshiping God without singing at the moment as a church congregation. And we've looked at different ways. We, we looked at silence and how we can worship God through silence, the gift of tongues. We have looked about, at how we can pour ourselves out to God in our brokenness. And this can be a kind of worship. Um, we've learned that we can give our best to God and we can be creative. And today we're going to look at thankfulness as the final part of our series and how we can express worship by saying thanks to God. At the beginning of our time together, I would like to invite you to think of a person you know that stands out for their thankfulness. A person you have met and a person that you have seen live out gratefulness and thankfulness in a way that has really impressed you. And as you think of this person, maybe you want to think about how have you become aware of their gratefulness? How has this person influenced you as a person, but also the community that this person is part of? I'll give you a moment to picture that person in your head. When I think of this grateful person in my life, I'm thinking of a friend back in Austria. I've known her for 35 years since I joined the church as a little girl. Um, she's part of my first home, home church in Vienna. And this woman was my Sunday school teacher. She was my youth leader. Um, and she's been an encouraging voice and a wise voice in my life for many, many years. And when I travel back to Austria, She's one of the first people that I want to meet at least once while I'm there. I love being in her company, also because she radiates gratefulness. She has cultivated a thankful heart for many years, for decades, and she has put effort into it, almost like cultivating a beautiful garden. I don't know if you know that feeling when you go for a little walk and you walk past the garden that's beautiful and you think, wow, I want something like this. Her thankfulness is contagious. I don't know about the person that you're thinking of, but when I watch my friend, I think, I want this too. She spots God's goodness at every corner of her life. Um, and I, I want to do the same when I see her live this out. If we want to learn a skill then the best thing we can do is to watch somebody who's really good at this, isn't it? Um, so when we look at gratefulness today, we'll spend some time in the company of the Apostle Paul, who is also called the Apostle of Gratefulness. How do, we do, how, how do we know that Paul was a grateful person? Um, well, first, he wrote about gratefulness in his letters to various churches and to individuals many, many times. Altogether, gratefulness is mentioned 49 times in connection with the life of Paul in the book of Acts and in his various letters. Paul lives and breathes thankfulness. He's thankful for many things, for other Christians, for their faith, their support and their provision in his life. But above all, he is grateful for Christ's role in his life. He's eternally grateful to Jesus. And this is especially wonderful because he used to be an enemy of Jesus. He used to be a persecutor of the Christian church. But then he had a personal encounter on the road to Damascus. And his life was completely turned around. And he dedicated the remainder of his life to following Jesus and to telling everyone about him that would want to hear. Our passage today 
that Roman is going to read in a moment is from Paul's letter to the Colossian church. This was a church in Asia Minor in present-day Turkey. Thankfulness is one of the important themes that comes up in this letter, and especially in chapter 3 that we're going to look at. Paul reminds the Colossians here that they have a new life in Christ. And because of this new life, he urges them to live accordingly and to show attitudes and behaviors um, that go with this new lifestyle and not the ones they used to, um, used to show, like slander, immorality of all kinds, greed, lies, and bad language. Those things don't suit the Colossians anymore. Instead, Paul motivates them to put on new habits that express their new identity in Christ. We'll be reading from chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. And while Roman is reading, let's pay attention to how many times we hear about gratefulness in this short passage. Colossians, Colossians 3, um, 12 to 17. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, Put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. With all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. How often is gratefulness mentioned here? How often did you count? It's three times. Um, three times in, in only five verses, and I think this should show us how important it is to Paul. Um, and I want to invite you to look at three simple truths with me today that emerge from this passage. Firstly, thankfulness enjoys company. Secondly, thankfulness is a heart matter. And thirdly, thankfulness is a lifestyle. So we'll briefly look at these three points together. Let us start with the first one. Thankfulness enjoys company. What do I mean by this? First of all, I mean that the thankfulness that Paul talks about here and in many other passages is closely connected with relationships. In verse 17, Paul motivates his readers to sing to God with gratitude in their hearts. Gratefulness is not just something that exists on its own, that could exist in isolation. It's always embedded in relationships. It needs two parties. It needs a person that's grateful and it needs somebody who receives the thanks. Let's take a quick look at the Greek word for thankfulness that Paul uses here. Um, Eucharistia. Um, this is the noun, um, and in chapter 3 Paul uses lots of other verb forms, but they basically point back to this word. And at the center of Eucharistia you can see the word charis, which is quite a popular name in Christian circles at the moment. Charis means grace. So thankfulness is really about God's grace. It's about our acknowledging his grace in our lives. It means that we see the blessings that we have not earned. It means that we see what has been freely given to us and that we acknowledge this. To Paul, it seems the most natural thing to express his thankfulness. It's not something that he keeps to himself in quiet contemplation. And yes, gratefulness is an attitude, but it's more than this. Gratefulness is always closely connected with worship, with thanksgiving. His gratitude and his worship go hand in hand. They cannot be separated. And in fact, this word, this Greek word, Eucharistia, does not distinguish between 
being grateful and thanksgiving, they're the same thing. I found that really fascinating when I was looking at the interlinear translation. So how do we know that Paul was thankful? We talked about this before. He expresses it 49 times. And one of my favorite accounts in the life of the Apostle Paul is in Acts chapter 27, when Paul and 275 other prisoners are on their way to Rome and they get shipwrecked off the coast of Malta. The passengers are gripped by fear and no wonder they are because they've been in turmoil for 14 days. They haven't eaten, the Bible is saying, they're weak and they're anxious. And what does Paul do? He urges them to eat. He knows that God is going to rescue the people in the ship because God has spoken to him about it. But what does he do? He thanks God. He breaks bread. He thanks God for it. And then he eats with the people that are present. Even in the face of great difficulty, Paul remembers that thanking God is a really important thing. And he doesn't keep it to himself. He expresses it in front of everyone present. Paul lives and breathes thankfulness. He doesn't just tell others to be grateful. He doesn't just talk the talk. He actually walks the walk. And he continually expresses his own gratitude to others and above all to God. Thankfulness enjoys company. It's deeply relational and it is designed to be expressed. But there's another aspect here that I would briefly like to touch upon. When we look at our passage, we will see that thankfulness actually enjoys the company of many other good qualities, of many other virtues here in this text. Paul writes in verse 12 of our text, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. All of these are so-called fruits of the Spirit. When we are connected to God, and when we let him work in our character, these fruits will grow as a natural result. In verse 15, Paul writes about peace as another quality that the Colossians should adopt. And then comes a short sentence, and be thankful. Full stop. Thankfulness is a quality that goes hand in hand with other virtues. They like each other's company. There is even scientific evidence for this um, to back this up. There's a book I love. It's written by a Russian scientist um, called Sonia Lyubomirsky. Um, she lives in the States, and um, it's her job to do research on happiness and what makes people happy. And she's written a great, very practical book called The How of Happiness. I don't know if you've come across it. I can really recommend it, by the way. And she says in her book, she writes in her book, thankful people are happy people. They're willing to help others they are more responsive to other people's needs. They are more willing to forgive and are less materialistic than less thankful people. Thankfulness enjoys company. That was our first point. And let us look at point number two now. Um, thankfulness is a heart matter. We've read in verse 15, let the message of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. We are supposed to thank God, but what does with gratitude in your hearts mean? It obviously mean that, it means that our thanksgiving, our worship to God, must come from a genuine place of devotion for God. Can you remember moments in your life when you were simply overflowing with gratitude because God had done something wonderful, um, where you just stood in awe of God's love for you. I remember some of those special moments. One was a few years ago when our car broke down and my husband Roman and I prayed a prayer of faith. Lord, we prayed, we need a new car. We don't have any money to, to pay for it, but we need one and um, please give us a car. And Please let it be a seven-seater so that we can also serve other people and give them lifts and help them move house. So it was a very specific prayer that we prayed. Um, the next day, you won't believe it, I got a text from a friend. Nobody knew about our prayer, apart from God and the two of us. Bella, we're getting rid of our car. 
wanted to scrap it, but you kept coming to our mind. Do you need one? What amazed me the most was that the car had seven seats and it served us for two years, us and others. We named it Carissa because it was, it's a car, but also because of Caris, this idea of God's grace. Yeah? Our cars all have names, our present car is called Polly, isn't it, Roman? <laughs> yeah, but Carissa was a, a special gift from God. Um, and we knew that it was by his grace that, that we could use her. It. <laughs> so that was one of the many wow moments that I had with God. I'm sure you can think of some instances like that, where you just connected with God in deep thankfulness and gratitude and just overflowed. These are the moments when we feel so connected with God. We feel known, we feel loved, we praise him. And it's just a natural thing to worship him in response. You're so good, Lord. Overflowing gratitude compels us to worship God. We stand in awe of Jesus and his goodness to us. But what about the times when life is tough? When we do not feel like thanking God. When we feel there is not much to thank him for. And maybe it's a time like this. A time when we feel restricted, a time when we miss being close to people we love, maybe a time of financial difficulty, a time when we just long to go back to normal, and don't we all long for that? Can I thank God in a time like this? And can I thank him with my heart? One of the discoveries that I have made recently is that in the Jewish context, the heart does not just refer to emotions. Emotions are part of what Paul as a Jew would see as the heart, but the heart in the Jewish mindset is actually a lot more than emotions. It refers to the entire inner being, the entire inner person. Our thoughts, our will, our knowledge, our desires. So when Paul writes with gratitude in your hearts, he does also imply the human will to worship God. He does also imply our readiness to thank him, whatever the situation is that we're in. Paul writes in a different letter to another church, the Thessalonians, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. How on earth can we do this, I'm asking? Thanking God when we don't feel like it? A few weeks ago, I had a, an enlightening conversation with my daughter, Anna Lauren, on this subject, and she's given me the permission to share this. I often find that God speaks to me through my children. I wonder if some of the parents can relate to this. We were talking about the pandemic and her disappointments in all of this. Mama, she said, in German, of course, because we speak German at home. Mama, I want to see the good things that are happening. But it is so hard. Something with me, in me connected with the truth when she was speaking out these words. Mama, I want to see the good things, but it's so hard. You know, I said to her, I feel exactly the same sometimes and often at the moment. But if you want to see the good things, this is such an important first step. Seeing the good things and wanting to see the good thing. God sees that. He will help you to be a goodness spotter. You do your part and he will do the rest to make it possible. I mount over this conversation for a couple more weeks um, afterwards. This was not just advice for my daughter. It was advice for me. Do I want to see God's blessings in my life? I, wanted, I asked myself, do you want to see God's blessings in your life even when life is tough? Thankfulness is a heart matter. Being thankful for my heart has to do with our whole inner person. This includes feelings, yes, but it's not just about feelings. Our will also has a part to play in this. And we need God's help on this journey to gratefulness. He has promised to be there. And if we follow Jesus wholeheartedly, we will get to know him better. And he has promised to transform us. Paul puts it like this in, our letter to, in the letter to the Colossians, just before our passage. 
you have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. And this brings us to our third and last truth today. Thankfulness is a lifestyle. I wonder how Paul felt when he was writing this letter to the Colossian church. Things did not look good for him from a human perspective. He was in a prison cell probably in Rome awaiting his trial. And still he continued to be thankful. How was he able to be graceful in the face of death? His words in Colossians 2 verse 6 give us a hint. Just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. There it is again. The advice he gives is something that Paul himself lives. He's deeply rooted in Jesus like a strong old knobbly tree that has slowly dug its roots into the soil. A wind, even a storm, will not uproot him easily because he is strong in this relationship with his Savior and his thankfulness overflows. This sounds wonderful, and I want this in my life, I'm thinking. And sometimes I can see it. But then there are times in my life when ungratefulness takes the upper hand. Moments when I feel entitled, moments when I mumble and grumble because things are not going the way I want them to go. Do you have the same experience sometimes? I often know what would be right and what would be the right thing to do, but then I don't. And Paul also had this experience, this inner struggle. He writes about it in a different letter to the Roman church in chapter 7. Paul writes, I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. I'm so grateful for God's forgiveness in my life, and I'm grateful for seeing that Paul was human too. He was a great example, yes, um, and he, he was a grateful man, but he was human, and he still sinned, and he disappointed God sometimes. But because of Jesus and his death, Paul was a part of God's chosen people, holy and beloved. He saw the Colossians like this. He saw, God saw Paul, sees Paul like this. He saw the Colossians like this. And he sees us like this when we are part um, of his church, when we belong to him. Paul knew who he was in Christ, and that was definitely the source of his thankfulness and at the heart of it. But I'm convinced that it did take him time while he, he was still learning to become a thankful man. He wasn't the same thankful man at the beginning of his life as he was at the end of his life. He practiced thankfulness over many, many years. He willfully embraced thankfulness, and he practiced and practiced some more, like practicing a musical instrument that people learn to play. And those of us who play one will know what I'm talking about, or those of us who have learned to speak a foreign language. New words don't appear out of nowhere. We need to understand their meaning and then we have to use them. I'm a German teacher to adult students and I keep telling my students, you have to use a word at least three times before it becomes part of your repertoire. Practice is just as important when we talk about gratefulness. And Paul knows that. And this is why he encourages the Colossian church in our passage in verse 12 to clothe themselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And later, he talks about love, peace, and thankfulness. These are qualities that we willfully need to put on every day, not just once and for all. Like a new shirt that we take out of the wardrobe in the morning and put on, and the next day we need a new shirt. Thankfulness is a lifestyle that will grow in us when we practice. Paul writes in our passage in verse 17, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. In other words, as you go about your day, continue giving thanks to God, the giver of all good things. And if we persist in this, this will become a lifestyle. I wonder what helps you personally to practice 
thankfulness in your life. In our family, we have a, a weekly tradition that we have been practicing for a few years now. Um, and Dominic, can you put the, the video on? Uh, while you're watching, I explain what we're doing. So almost every Sunday, Saturday night, sorry, at the dinner table, we fill an empty glass to the point where it overflows as a reminder of God's goodness in our lives. We exactly know what's going to happen because we've seen it hundreds of times before, but we're waiting for the moment when the glass overflows. Um, yeah, it's so exciting. And my kids often laugh when they see this, this happening. It, it creates joy to see this glass overflowing because in our hearts, we have connected uh, this glass with the treasure of the memories that speak of God's grace in our lives. And then we talk about our week and we drink the, uh, the grape juice together and we tell each other where we have spotted God's goodness and his loving hand. And we share stories of, of our week and moments of gratefulness. And the fascinating thing is we have always found something to be thankful for, even in the toughest weeks, even when we were heartbroken, um, tired, stressed, there's always been at least one or two things where we felt God has given us something good in this week. And we miss the moment when we forget one week and say, we have to do it again. It's good for us to remember. I wonder what helps you to cultivate thankfulness in your life. We'll have a short time of silence now to give you some space to think about this question. And then Rupert is going to lead us in a communal conversation on the question, what helps you to cultivate thankfulness in your life? Banner, thank you so much for sharing that and stimulating our thinking, um, opening up that scripture for us. So it's just a bit of a chance now for us to do some uh, communal work of just thinking about how practically we might do this. How can we practically cultivate thankfulness um, in our lives? And uh, I, I've really appreciated listening to you, Bella, because this week I've been aware that increasingly I've been frustrated about what I can't do. Uh, and I've been trying to reorientate my thinking to think about what can I do? What can I do that I'm allowed to do that brings me life and joy and that I'm grateful for rather than just being frustrated about what I can't do uh, just now? And I think that's what you're offering us is a reorientation about the way that we think about things that's really appropriate for um, this season. So there's a chance in a moment just to come to the microphone if you're here in the King's Hall or um, put something in chat and just say that you'd like to share something. We'd, we'd love to hear from you um, and we can get you um, sharing uh, here in the King's Hall and on Zoom. Uh, but if you'd prefer just to write something in chat, you can do that too. 
Um, Kirsty, I'm wondering if you've got something that you would like to just share with us first while we give everybody else a chance to think if they'd like to. Yeah, I'd love to because I'm going to choose to take the cultivation literally because yesterday uh, we had an impromptu offer of somebody helping to helping us to cultivate our garden and our garden was completely overgrown and it was terrible and there was hardly any light coming in. And um, he's like, oh, I'll just come back with my tools in an hour. And I got to use this massive big <laughs> thing to cut our bushes back. And then I thought, actually, this is something that we're allowed to do. This is something that we can do outdoors together and actually we've been tasked to do um, as stewards of the earth. Um, so I um, kept the secateurs and I'm gonna just be trimming away this afternoon and I'm gonna really enjoy that. And it, it's something to innocently and purely just enjoy outdoors. Um, yeah, and while I'm doing it, reflect on Bella's awesome sermon. <laughs> Thanks, Kirsty. Thank you. Love that idea of just cultivating uh, something. I think we've got, um, have we got Barry and Alison? Or is that, no? Yes? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Alison. <laughs> um, some people will know that I've been struggling a lot lately with my hip. And I've lost a lot of mobility. Um, and I, what I've found in that is that I, I have the urge, I see somebody running, you know, or even walking fast like I used to do. Um, I have the urge to say to them, appreciate that, you can do that. I really appreciate it because I can't do that now. Um, and then I've begun to realize you know, I could lose a lot more. <laughs> I, I, not that I'm thinking I will, but, you know, just thinking it through, I, I could completely lose my ability. I could be paralyzed. I could be, you know, other people are in that circumstance. So I began to try and look at, yeah, what I can do. My arms are both still functioning really well. Uh, thank you for that. And um, I'm not saying that I've got that sorted out in any way, but there's just, there's nothing like losing something that you've taken for granted to make you begin to, to appreciate it. And I think that's what um, I'm learning in this time. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Alison. And uh... I think you've been posting one or two things on, on Facebook with a similar kind of thing that's partly also been prompted by someone else who's done, I think, Thankfulness November or something like that every day, just trying to post something on social media about what they've been thankful for in their day. So, Alison, thank you. Is there someone else? Stefan, it looks like you're on the edge of your seat. And then I think Rachel here. Um, Stefan. Well, on the most basic level, every time I take a breath, there's something about, yes, life. So I'm, every time I take a breath, there's a feeling of thankfulness. And in a way, with Corona, this makes Corona such a vile thing. Corona uh, is um, so affecting people's breathing. But every time we can take a breath, every time I can take a breath, I feel thankful. Brilliant. Thank you, Stefan. Um, well, Rachel comes up on, uh, on Zoom. We've had Ivana um, that uh, just when she wakes up in the morning, first thing of just trying to be uh, thankful, practicing uh, that first thing uh, in the morning, Rachel. And then we got Joy on Zoom as well. Uh, so I was thinking about this during lockdown, what has changed, and two things came to mind. Um, so I've noticed that me and Dominic are home more often. So simply uh, before meals, we find, I, I find that we're praying 
more than normal because we wouldn't always be home together. And it's very easy to remind yourself, for me, for us anyway, what we're thankful for during that time. And, and so that's actually increased, I guess, during lockdown for us because we're together at home more often. And then the second thing is I was thinking with work and different things getting stressful now and then is just how to do things differently each day. So an example of this week was just getting outside, just walking even for five minutes. Um, it just takes your mind away from where you are to think about bigger stuff. And then the second part of that is even meeting someone for coffee and just yet again re being reminded of there's so much else going on in the world and there's so much more to see outside of your own life and your own bubble and how your routine is each day. I love that idea that there, there are moments in the, in the day when we can pause and be um, thankful. Um, so we'll take Joy and then Trish here. Uh, and just before Joy, just Tom has got an app that reminds him um, to write down three gratitudes each day. Um, and so an app using technology. Uh, so we'll go for Joy first. Hi, can you hear me? Give me a give me a wave, Rupert, if you can hear me. Excellent, because I've lost your sound from you. Um, one thing we do with our kids is we make sure we say thank you for something every night with them before bed. And it's just about getting them to practice gratitude. I think as particularly as a way of combating the un entitlement that I sometimes see around us. Um, and it has to be something different every night that's not about a screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not a computer game um, so that's something we do and um, I love the invitation to think about someone who may you know has taught us gratitude and for me that was my granny and she was an amazing person of, of who gave thanks so much and actually she is um, she influenced Pete Gregg who started this global prayer movement she's in one of his books um, and he he talked about how she taught him to be grateful. I just think, isn't that amazing that someone who, just this little old lady um, and her influence, the way that she was thankful has influenced um, someone who's been so influential, influential. So thank you, Bella, it's been great this morning. Excellent, thank you, Joy. And uh, we'll have Trish as the last one. Yeah, just, um feel really thankful to the Lord because um, Holy Spirit teaches us so many things, even in the hardest of times. And um, of late, you know, the waves sometimes of circumstances become bigger and bigger um, as you grow in your walk with the Lord. And um, particularly through this time. And sometimes those waves can be so big that it just pulls you down and it's a sort of um it's a lesson that i've learned but i guess as i've grown god takes you deeper into those lessons and you know the holy spirit was just saying keep your eyes on jesus keep your eyes on jesus and when you're in an emotional place that can be really difficult and for me, um, you know, singing and worshipping God in the home helps me to keep my eyes on Jesus. And the wonderful thing with that is I started to feel joy welling up in me. And, you know, it just changed my whole day. I was just joyful. And then when the thoughts of those big waves kept coming in. I just kept putting my focus on Jesus. And again, you know, I was just, I just, just was completely different, really. Thank you so much. Just that importance of worship, keeping our focus on Jesus. We've got one or two other comments uh, just on Zoom. Um, Abby just saying that thankfulness is an antidote to despair. Uh, Rory, who's saying every night he goes to bed um, thankful to the Lord that he's got 
got him through another day um, with some health challenges. And Colin says um, he begins each day with walking prayer um, and just coming into God's presence at the beginning of each day. I guess one of the things that strikes me through all the different sharing, lots of really rich um, things and ideas, um, but one of the things that strikes me is uh, trying to find some rhythms, daily rhythms, uh, that help us connect with the, the reorientating our view to be thankful for what God is doing. We've had that meal times in the morning, in the evening, using an app, and just uh, probably some other ones that I've now forgotten, but that sense of just finding those rhythms, daily rhythms, to be thankful. So thank you so much um, for that sharing. Uh, we're going to finish this morning with a song that Toby is just going to lead us in, a chance just to reflect personally uh, what it is that we maybe want to take away and put into action uh, from this morning. What do we want to do to cultivate thankfulness uh, in our own lives? So maybe you're at home or you've been sitting here in the King's Hall for a while. Uh, so why don't we stand, maybe just get the blood moving through our bodies if you're able to or you would like to, but just to engage in some way in this worship uh, and just allow God to speak to us in these final few minutes together.
So something that we don't have to be afraid of spreading is thankfulness. So let's think about how we can do that throughout the week. I know I feel really encouraged by everybody's practices and I'm going to be thinking about that. So if you would like to join us for bread and wine, stay on Zoom. Um, but that is going to be the end of our live stream now. Thank you. So goodbye to those people.